Welcome to The Hidden Homestead. My name is David, and today we're going to do a quick and shallow dive into the world of ballistics. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. As I mentioned in the intro, we are going to do a very quick and shallow dive into the world of ballistics. The reason I'm doing this is because you may or may not know, I have started classes at the Sonoran Desert Institute, SDI. And for some of those classes, I have to submit videos. So I figured since I have to submit those videos, I might as well make them into a video and then show them to you guys. And the reason for that is because if you are considering SDI as an option to, to go to school, you can watch these videos and kind of figure out, eh, yeah, it's for me, yeah, no, not really. Or, or you might just want some of this information for yourself just to have. So I'm just gonna try to give you the information that I receive in this class and then that way, you know, we can all be friends. Speaking of being friends, I took a look at my analytics and I noticed that 96 to 98% of my viewers are not subscribed. So if you would, please do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there. It does wonders for the channel and it's free. You'd be helping me out greatly. And if you like this content, go ahead and hit that like button and share it with your friends if you think they'll get something out of it. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the... One last thing before we get into it, I gotta thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is this guy. That's right, The Hidden Homestead is sponsoring today's video because nobody likes me. Nobody wants to sponsor my videos. But that's okay, because I have thehiddenhomesteadstore.com where you can go and check out free, no, it ain't free, but you can go check out some awesome merch like this hat. We also have t-shirts and tumblers and stuff and things and beard oil. If you have a beard and you're awesome and you want to smell good and make your beard look great, then go check it out at thehiddenhomesteadstore.com. And when you use a discount code, the Hidden Homestead, you'll receive 10% off of your order. So thank you very much, me, thehiddenhomesteadstore.com for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's get into it. All right, so the assignment itself was split up into three separate parts. So it makes sense that I split the video up into the same parts. Now in this first part, we'll discuss the four different subfields of ballistics and any variables that may affect the flight and performance of any uh, given projectile. But first, what is ballistics? Ballistics is a science that deals with the motion or the flight characteristics of an object that is driven forward. As mentioned, there are four separate fields of ballistics, which are internal, transitional, external, and terminal. Now, internal ballistics is a study of the propulsion of a projectile. It covers the time from the propellant's ignition until the projectile exits the barrel. Transitional ballistics is a study of a projectile's behavior as it moves from the muzzle to the point where the pressure behind it equalizes. It's the area of transition between internal and external ballistics, which brings us to external ballistics. It's the study of a projectile's flight from the moment it leaves the muzzle of a weapon until it hits its target. Once it hits its target, in comes the terminal ballistics, and that is the study of how a projectile behaves and transfers its kinetic energy to a target when it hits it. Now, there are different variables that affect each one of these different types or fields of ballistics. Variables that affect internal ballistics are mainly barrel and cartridge design. For example, long barrels made of thin materials can experience barrel whip, and this is exactly what it sounds like. The barrel actually moves and will decrease overall accuracy, which of course can cause you to miss your intended target. The cartridge shape, such as the body diameter, uh, shoulder slant angle, neck length, all those can affect the amount of pressure inside the case and the projectile's acceleration. This can help achieve higher velocities, which is actually the speed of the bullet. We'll talk more about velocity in a minute, but first, some variables that can affect transitional ballistics include dirty bore, air pressure, and under, and under or over powdered charges. 
Now, arguably, transitional ballistics is the field that is usually overlooked. And the reason being is because while it does affect the overall ballistic capabilities of a round, it is very sh a very short window of time relative to the whole ballistic picture. Now, as far as external ballistics, there are quite a few variables that can affect the bullet's flight, which includes gravity, air resistance, wind, air density, temperature, altitude, atmospheric pressure, and there's a couple more, but that's just to name a few. So we'll come back to some of the other ones in just a second, but know that all these factors are going to affect how the bullet travels through the air. Now, some variables that affect the terminal ballistics include bullet size, shape, and even the target composition itself. Now, I told you earlier that we would talk more about velocity. The reason I held off is because velocity is one of the main variables that affect both external and terminal ballistics. Now, remember, the velocity started back in the internal ballistics, and it plays a big role in the amount of drop, wind drift, time in flight, and other aspects of the bullet's trajectory during the external ballistic phase. The other factor that can contribute to those same things and coincides with velocity is the ballistic coefficient, or BC. We'll discuss BC a little later, but just know that it's the bullet's ability to overcome air resistance while in flight. Keep that in mind because uh, I'm, I'll bring up an important topic uh, a little bit later. Now, during the terminal ballistic phase, the speed of the bullet when it hits the target is known as the striking velocity. Striking velocity is one of the seven factors that determine the bullet's performance. Generally, higher velocities are better. But how do you keep the bullet's velocity as high as possible? Well, this is where the bullet design comes in. A bullet design plays a huge role in both external and terminal ballistics. More specifically, bullet mass to diameter ratio, also known as sectional density. Which brings us to part two. Sectional density, or SD, is calculated by dividing the bullet's weight in pounds by its di diameter squared. This number describes the bullet's length relative to its diameter. So a higher SD means the bullet is longer. The higher a bullet's SD, the better it will retain momentum, both in the air and once in the target. So bullets with a higher sectional density tend to penetrate deeper and cause more damage and is why hunters often choose bullets with higher SDs for larger gain. Simply put, if all things are equal, the longer your bullet in any caliber, the higher their sectional density and the better their chances for deep penetration. So the third part of this assignment was to uh, choose one question from a list of 10 and briefly go over and answer that question. The question that I picked just kind of seemed to make sense because we're already talking about sectional density. And this question is, why is sectional density considered to be more important than projectile shape? Now, I think that this could potentially be argued for both sides, but first we'll go ahead and answer why it's considered to be more important. If all things are not equal, then yes, I would say that sectional density is definitely more important. And the reason being is because if you have different calibers with different weights or grains or whatever the case may be, um, then the higher SD will perform better no, no matter what. More than likely, the one with a higher SD, no matter what the shape is, no matter what the weight is, no matter what the caliber is, the projectile with the higher SD will perform better. However, remember I told you to keep ballistic coefficient in mind, and this is where I think that this question could be argued against. Uh, the reason for that is ballistic coefficient has a lot to do with the bullet shape itself. So, like I said before, if all things are not equal, then okay, sectional density is more important. But if things are similar, if all things are the same, sectional density doesn't have as much to do with it as, as the bullet shape or the projectile shape. And I'm going to use two different 308 rounds to just prove that point real quick. So you take a 200, both of these are 200 grains. And uh, because they're both 200 grain 308 cartridges or, or projectiles, they are both going to have the same sectional density, which is 0 0.301. 
One, uh, one projectile is a swift A-frame. The swift A-frame is kind of a, kind of a flat nose, um, just a, kind of a flat nose projectile. And then uh, we'll take the Nosler Acubon. Now the Nosler Acubon, its shape, it has a boat tail base and it has a pointy tip. And so therefore it flies through the air a lot easier. Now the BC for the Swift A-frame is 0.444. The BC for the Nosler Acubon is 0.588. Again, the reason the uh, Acubond has a higher BC is because the boat tail base and the sharper tip. That makes a sleeker bullet shape, also known as higher BC, which helps the projectiles of any sectional density retain energy because they slip through the air rather than fight it. So high BC actually assists SD. Um, so the higher both numbers, the more energy is delivered at all ranges and the more the bullet should penetrate in theory. In this context, I don't believe that bullet shape is any less important. I would argue that it is actually more important because it's going to assist deliver more energy on target. So the last part of this assignment is to explain uh, why topics like these are important for the average gunsmith to understand. I believe ballistics are important for the average gunsmith because it will help them troubleshoot uh, the firearm itself. For example, uh, I'll, I'll use the, the barrel whip that I talked about earlier. Um, basically, I, I, about a year ago, I built a recce style rifle and with a recce style rifle, basically I wanted it light as possible and I wanted it to be able to reach out to at least 600 yards. I chose a 16 inch pencil profile barrel. I chose a pencil profile because bad back, I wanted it as light as possible. I wanted to save weight. Unfortunately, I believe that pencil profile is just too thin to reach out and it's just not stable. The harmonics on it just aren't good and it's not able to reach out to that 600 yards. At 300 yards, my accuracy, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm chasing everything. At 100, about 100 yards, I'm okay. Had I not known anything about internal ballistics, I would have thought, well, it's either me or this gun is a piece of junk. It's not the gun itself. It might just be that barrel. So something I'm looking into is getting a heavier barrel and see if that makes a difference. So that is why I believe topics like these are important for the average gunsmith to understand. All right, guys, like I mentioned, that was a very quick and shallow dive into the world of ballistics. This is the first video for the first course that I'm doing in SDI, the Snoring Desert Institute. Now, again, like I said, if it is something that you are interested in, uh, if you're considered taking classes at SDI and you just really don't know what to expect, keep coming back. I'm going to create a playlist for everything on SDI and you can come back and kind of take a look and see if it's for you. If it's not something you want to do and you just want to get some of the knowledge that I'm getting out of this class, by all means, come on back and take a look at what I've got for you and what I'm learning. And I'm just going to tell you basically what I'm learning. So hopefully you got something out of the video. If you did hit that like button and consider sharing it, if you know someone that, that might get something out of it. Also, like I said, it would help the channel out tremendously. And I would love you if you hit that subscribe button right down there and the little bell icon so you get notifications on whenever I put out some of these silly little videos. So until next time, I love you guys. Peace out.